I guess what really makes Brink stand apart is that firstly it takes place on the Ark. It's this immense artificial floating city uh, built at sea as part of a contemporary green vision, but now existing around 2045, it's lost contact with the rest of the Earth. There's no ships passing, no planes flying over, complete radio silence, and they're really running low on resources. So it's become the focus of a, a kind of isolated and horrific conflict between competing social factions. You have the resistance, who represent the refugees, and everything they have is kind of begged and borrowed and stolen. And then the security, who have a lot more resources, and they represent the original founders. When we last showed you guys the game, and you have some brilliant footage online at GameTrailers.com, we basically put out a lot of footage of things like Container City, where you're attacking as the security, and you could think of the game, if you like, as a solo, single-player shooter. You know, you can just run and gun and witness the big cinematics and everything, and that's cool. But what we're doing at E3 this year is also showing you how deep the co-op experience can be. So we're dropping people straight into the game at level 14 on a resistance mission to try and blow up the main reactor of art. And so that's uh, essentially what people are up to. We've got um, a couple of new advances with customization that we're really pleased with. We've got a brand new character customization interface that lets you manipulate a character in 3D, drilling right in on them and changing things like facial scars and tattoos and face paint, you can customize your outfits, you can treat your weapons with the same system so you can get straight in on 3D and swap out scopes and silencers and you know muzzle flash and uh, front grips. And then we have our call cool ability system and what this allows you to do is just specialize in the combat role you really enjoy playing by buying cool perks, you know, like Fallout 3. You can get new abilities and skills and tools and gadgets. So we have a new approach to movement in Brink and it's called smooth movement across random terrain. And the idea behind this smart system is pretty straightforward. Really what we're trying to do is remove, I guess what you'd call kind of artificial and frustrating constraints of our pass shooters. You know, you run up to a table and you can't jump on it because it's two inches too high. Even though it looks like you could crawl under it, you can't because a designer hasn't put the right entity there or a wall. You know, it's just this high, but for some reason I can't mantle over the top. We have this smart button, it doubles as your sprint button, and when it's engaged, you're basically saying to the game that you want to get somewhere as smoothly and easily as possible. You can use it to mantle and climb up over things, you can vault and slide across tables, I can use it to slide down under stuff as well. It just makes it much easier to use the shooter. So I mean the basic premise of character classes, that's existed in RPGs for years. In Brink what we're really talking about is combat roles, but more specifically being able to play a combat role that suits your preferred playing style. So if you think you've got a great aim, play soldier, be on the front line, pull off cracking mid-air headshots, plant explosive charges, blow through gates and open up routes for your team. But you know, if you want to, you could also play operative. As an operative, you can sneak into the enemy base, disguise yourself as the enemy, hack into their computers, open up back doors, you know, com scan downed enemies and reveal the location for the rest of your teammates. You could play engineer in more of a support role, where you know, without firing a single shot, you can do things like put down defense turrets, buff your teammates' weapons, and actually support your team on tons of XP, even though you might not be that good at actually aiming at people and pulling off those wicked head it, those headshots. What's really nice about this system is that as you start to find a combat role that suits the way that you want to play, you know in an RPG you might be a meat shield on the front line or a paladin healing people, it's just like that in Brink but for shooting, you can then start to level up your character and really specialise in those skills and abilities, buying things like combat intuition that lets you know about where enemies are just kind of on your peripheral vision, that sense you might have in real life that kind of is gone because of your, your limited view in a, in a shooter. And equally, you know, if you're playing something like uh, Operative, you can buy a cool uh, sticky bomb. It's like a grenade with spikes in it that you can throw at the enemy, it sticks into their head, and it goes off five seconds later if a teammate doesn't get to them to pull it off in time. So there are some really fun weapons and calls and gadgets and stuff that you can use. The key thing for us is that we want to blur the lines truly between offline and online gaming. So it really doesn't matter how you play the game, you still get to advance your same in-game character. To take an example, you might go out and get the game and be playing single player at home. Just having a blast, playing through the missions, you know, witnessing the big cinematics and, you know, uh, big cool in-game moments. But then one of your friends comes online, well he can just jump straight into his game, jump straight into your game with you, bringing his character that's upgraded with his cool outfits and weapon unlocks and upgrades and modifications and his abilities and tools and gadgets and start playing alongside you. You don't have to get together and form a party first or go into like a holding room with 
VOIP and talk and stuff, he can just jump straight into the game while you're playing. In fact, we have full drop in and out support for up to seven friends to join you at any time. You know what though, later that evening if you want to, you could open up the enemy to strangers. So you and your friend are playing a coordinated battle against a whole bunch of random people in a full versus mode with 16 people on the server. It doesn't matter how you play, you still advance your same in-game character and all the experience points that you earn you can spend on levelling the characters that you've created. Brink, it's uh, scheduled for release on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 and PC and it's going to be out in Spring 2011.